Welcome everyone to my first build of 2022. Before I get started, I'd like you to close your eyes and just imagine a field of new fallen snow, clean and pristine and all white. And that's kind of what I've got going on right now. First of all, because it's a new year, so you know, blank canvas and lots of things to look forward to, positivity and all that. And second, because I'm building an all white PC. That was my goal when I first saw the O11 Evo case that Leanne Lee sent over, which I did a video on uh, just recently. You can check it out if you're interested. But I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than you might have seen before. I'm gonna flip it upside down. Excellent. The Thermaltake Tower 100 is back in a variety of colors. This unique and versatile mini ITX chassis has three tempered glass panels for an expansive view of your epic build. The vertical orientation means support for big three slot graphics cards and tall air coolers. And every side and top panel is removable, which makes building or accessing the inset magnetic dust filters way easier. This case performed well in my testing, even with the high-end 5900X and RTX 3080 system. It has full-size ATX power supply support, and it's now available in turquoise, metallic gold, and racing green. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So right out of the gate, a big thank you to a few vendors who sent over parts for this. Uh, Leanne Lee, of course, for the O11 Evo. Asus sent a handful of stuff. This ROG Maximus Z690 formula motherboard, which is just so nice, so beautiful. Probably a little bit overkill for this build, to be perfectly honest, but it has the look that I was looking for, so that's what we went with. Asus also sent over a trio of all-white peripherals. The Scope NXTKL keyboard, the Impact 2 mouse, and the Go Core headset, all in moonlight white finish and this ROG Thor 1000 watt platinum two power supply, which is a very high end 1000 watt 80 plus platinum rated power supply. It is one of the very few components in this build that are not completely white, but it will be hidden behind the motherboard tray. So we will only be seeing these white extension cables that I got, which are from Antec. Also from Asus, although technically I borrowed this from Kyle because Asus didn't have any of the white versions of the graphics cards left for sampling, is the GeForce RTX 3090 ROG Strix edition, which is also the white version of that, which is just the beastly huge graphics card. So, so we're at least gonna get that installed for the purposes of this video. And then Asus was gonna send an all-in-one liquid cooler. However, I just realized very recently that it wasn't in the packages it got sent over. So I called upon Joe. He stopped by Micro Center. And so we have, <laughs> have it hit me in the side of the face. There it is. Finishing the all white components, the ROG Strix LC 360 millimeter RGB all-in-one liquid cooler. Uh, I do not have the LGA 1700 mounting kit for this, but I'm 99% sure that it is a standard Acetec mount, which means that the, the Corsair mounting kits that I have for some of their AIOs should work with it. Speaking of Corsair, they also sent over matching fans for this entire build, the QL120 RGB series, also the white edition. These just look beautiful, both the RGB and the finish on the fans themselves. So a huge thank you to Corsair for sending that over, as well as the Dominator Platinum RGB, a 32 gigabyte kit, DDR5, 5600 cast latency, 36. Uh, and this is the first time that I have uh, experienced the Dom Platts in white in DDR5 trim. So that's gonna look beautiful too. And that just about rounds things out. But, uh, oh, uh, we also have a processor, of course. Uh, this is provided by me because I bought it. It's the i7-12700K. Uh, so I'm excited to get this installed and run a few tests on it as well, which I'll be doing in a follow-up video. Last thing I mentioned would be storage. I'm running uh, the 970 Evo, uh, one terabyte from Samsung, and that's because that's really all this build needs, at least to get us off the ground, because this build is eventually going to go to my lovely wife. And that's why I'm doing the flipped build, is because where it's gonna sit in our computer room, it's gonna be able to show off the internals versus the current setup, which is facing the wall. So this will be an aesthetic and a performance improvement for her once it's all finished. That said, let's get into the build.
So I hope you guys liked that first look of some of the parts we're using today. I don't know about you, but I found it to be quite appealing. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna do next is the first basic setup of the motherboard, which means installing the components there, CPU, the memory, the storage, and then of course there's the case, which I didn't show you guys too much in that footage just now, and that's because I already did a full video just on this case alone, taking it apart and doing stuff like flipping the chassis, which is one of the features of the O11 Evo. You can reverse it, so the window is on this side and the motherboard's upside down, and that's how we're gonna be building today. So if you would like to see more on that, check out that video uh, where I go over all the details for that. There are still some big questions to be answered for this build, which is, uh, do I wanna have the graphics card installed sort of upside down like that so you can see the fans from the top, which would be kind of cool, although it would be a little bit further up in the case, or do I wanna go with that upright orientation uh, and have the graphics card, wait, how does it even work? And I didn't even do it with the thing flipped like this, so I'd have to figure out how that fits in there. All that remains to be seen, but uh, like I said, for now, I'm gonna get this motherboard set up, and also, I just feel like I have to kind of apologize for some of the uh, component decisions for this build. Like I said, really was focusing on aesthetics and getting the all-white build. And when Asus said, hey, we've got the Maximus Z690 formula available for you, I was like, ah, this processor, we are really going for all-out aesthetics and everything being as, as white as possible. And I also wanted the color scheme and the RGB control to be fairly easily controllable. And for that reason, most of the RGB uh, elements in this build are from Asus and Corsair. And we can use the Corsair IQ software to control Asus components because they've worked together pretty closely to make sure that functionality is integrated into the software. Now there are white finish Z690 motherboards out there, but I think there's none that are prettier looking uh, than the Asus Z690 formula right now. So when Asus said this is available, I was like, you know what? Pairing it with a 12700K might seem a little bit silly. This is about a 420-ish dollar processor at retail right now. The motherboard currently lists for 800, which is almost double the price. But I mean, come on, for a white build like this, it's got the white fixed IO, it's got this white back plate that covers almost the entire thing, which honestly, you're not gonna be able to see very much once it's installed, but the point is that it's there. But I am pretty confident that the 12700K will get just about the same frame rate out of the RTX 3090 as the 12900K, which would be the one step up we could go to from there. And even the 12900K, costs less than this motherboard, so there's my excuse. And I guess the one thing we're really not making use of here is the integrated water cooling, since the formula boards for quite a few generations now have had integrated water cooling for the VRMs, and it's got an EK unit right there with G and a quarter fittings that uh, you can easily integrate it into a loop. But for what it's worth, I just wanted to acknowledge that yes, I'm aware of that too, and uh, I guess preempt some of the comments from the comment section. Let's get the CPU installed next though. There's a single panel here that covers all your M.2 slots, or the two that are down here at the bottom, and this also has like a big bank of LEDs here for display through this. So I'm excited to see what that looks like once the system's up and running. Two really nice, just convenient, ease of use features that this board has is this little push button right here that you can push to unlock uh, the catch tab on your PCI Express slot here. So for removing a graphics card, especially a big one like we're gonna have installed, really, really happy to have that there. This is something that I pointed out with the Z690 Hero motherboard from Asus. It's just one of those features. I'm like, oh, thank, thank goodness. That's really helpful for, especially for someone like me. Also down here for our M.2 installation, and I'm gonna install this one here because there are no components on the bottom of the 970 EVO to keep cool. Also, this is a Gen 3 drive, so all of the slots on this board are either Gen 4 or Gen 5, so it doesn't really matter where we install it to. But this board also has a Asus feature that they've included for, I think this is this, maybe the second gen of boards they've had it on. It's just an M.2, I don't know if they call this an M.2 Q connector or Q latch or something like that. They have a name for it. It's just an automatic connector, so you don't have to worry about a tiny little screw there uh, to keep your M.2 drive in place. And now I'm just gonna put this back on, of course, after removing our thermal pad protective cover. So before I install the motherboard into the case, I would like to have the back brackets uh, for the AIO installed on top of that. And like I said, the one that Joe picked up does not have an LGA 1700 mounting kit included. That is something that Asus will provide you since this is uh, pretty much a standard Asetek style mount there on the back for this unit with one of these that you might have seen before in terms of the retention bracket. And these are compatible with LGA 1151 and prior. 
So what I've done is I've scrounged from my H-159i Elite LCD collection uh, a pack of these. These are the Intel LGA 1700 standoffs that uh, you would use in order to mount one of these. And the only real difference between these and the 1151 ones is the height, as you can hopefully see here. And this is the older one for LGA 1150 and 1151 on the right, and the newer LGA 1700 ones on the left. So my first thought was, well, I can just swap to those and install as usual because it is a standard Ace Tech mount. So here are the two brackets that come with the two kits uh, that go behind the motherboard. The one on the left here is for the Asus ROG Strix kit. The one on the right here is for the uh, newer Corsair kit. And I did happen to notice, maybe you can tell that sort of the uh, standoffs there that these screws tighten into are a little bit lower on the one that comes with the Corsair kit uh, than this one here that comes with the Asus kit. And uh, that might be because of the Corsair kit's uh, varying mounting mechanism for the actual AIO unit itself. But it does present me with a dilemma, and uh, I'm just, just being honest with you guys in that uh, I'm sort of proceeding in a way that uh, might, might not really work here. So we're gonna see how things go. For my purposes, I'm gonna go with the Corsair bracket and the Corsair LGA 1700 standoffs here. That should still align with the standard LGA 1151 slash LGA 1700 bracket that's on the pump lock unit itself. And uh, that's how we're gonna do things. So I hope it works. Okay, really glad we're testing this before installing into the case because um, I, I cleared the thermal paste, paste off the bottom of the block there just to line this up and see if we were gonna have good contact as well as enough space. And we don't have enough space. It's probably difficult to see right there, but the standoffs that were installed are not poking up high enough to actually clear this bracket, which means we can't thread uh, the, re the retention screw caps on the top, which is kind of important to do. So that that is telling me is that uh, this block pump combo unit right here and the Corsair one probably have different points that the bracket sits at right here. And that is why this bracket that comes with the Asus ROG one actually has higher up mounting points right there. So let's switch back to this one. And all we're gonna use from the Corsair kit are those uh, LGA 1700 standoffs and hopefully that will put us in the right spot. Actually forget anything I was just saying there about this whole CPU mounting situation here is what I'm actually gonna do. You see, these motherboards have mounting holes for both LGA 1200 and LGA 1700. Uh, LGA 1200 is the same as LGA 1150, 1151. That was the same for quite some time. I believe it's 75 by 75 for LGA 1200. So it's the inner holes. And then the outer ones are for LGA 1700, which are 78 by 78. So I'm just gonna go with that LGA 1200 mount and I'm gonna ditch any of this hardware I was trying to steal from the Corsair AIO because honestly, that was probably a bad idea from the get-go. So I am taking the LGA 1200 hardware from the Strix water cooler and I'm sliding these uh, four little screw hole mounting things in a little bit so they go on the inner holes rather than the outer ones.
All right, we've made a lot of progress and I'm really, really liking how things are looking. I really like how the cable extensions are looking and uh, the only thing that's kind of bugging me right now is like this area right down in here. It's just sort of, there's, a, there's kind of a bare spot and also it's providing a little bit too much of a look, I think, at the cables coming off of these bottom fans. So I think I might reroute a couple of those. And for that open spot right there, I think I might just take that Derbauer badge and stick it right there, Lee and Lee Derbauer badge. So uh, I'll apply that later. I did want to do one thing really quick. All right, so there's the GPU temporarily installed and that allows me to do this really quick and test. All right, so th these will be long enough to reach and I think I need to go up and over rather than uh, down because I think that'll make things a little bit too busy down there. And I think I can do three of these that should clear the side panel and also get where I need them to go. So there's a quick look at that. And I'm kind of glad I didn't go with one of the sort of different orientations for the GPU because I think just it being upside down is cool enough. And having that really cool triple fan configuration just viewable from the top and the outside. That's it. I still need to install uh, the power supply that's over there. And I get to start to think about cable management, which is going to be oh so much fun. For the RGB fans, since I have 10 of them, I'm going to use a Commander Pro and that has two USBs on it that can break out to two of these and that can control up to 12 for the RGB lighting, of course. Uh, and then, then six of the fans can plug into this to be controlled via IQ and then the other ones I'll just plug in directly to the motherboard. Like I said, though, super happy with how things are coming together and I think we're in the home stretch. So first I uh, lifted the corner of this up so I could kind of feed these two cables down through here. Next, I'm going to try to go like under the chassis right here um, by using that thing that this case can do. I'll lift the whole chassis off of the frame, or I, I guess the base, I should call it the base. Lifting the frame off the base. You know what I'm saying though? Just pull those right through. And there it is, after quite the extended build process, this system is all put together. What do you guys think? I think it looks quite beautiful. And even though the build process took a long time, uh, I actually had a lot of fun with it. I was trying to be really meticulous with the cable management, tucking things away wherever possible. And I think without the aid of modifications or painting or anything like that, it'd be pretty tough to build a system with more like all white features than what we've got going on here. Of course, there are some black, silver, gray elements in there as well, but I think they're scattered about fairly tastefully. The white is the primary thing. And if you can't tell right now, this is a really bright build. And in fact, when I booted it up for the first time, I was sort of startled by one, how bright it is, and two, uh, just how quiet the fans are. These QL series fans from Corsair are super, super quiet uh, without any tuning or anything being done. And you may have noticed I did get Windows 11 installed so I could at least start 
to play around with the lighting configuration. Now my intent was to use the Corsair IQ software to control all of the lighting in the system. Unfortunately, they are still in need of a couple updates because this is brand new hardware from Asus, so it's not officially recognized yet. It is showing up in the IQ uh, panel right there, so I can see the Asus motherboard and graphics card, but it's not showing the specific model number, so controlling stuff like all of the RGB headers on the board, which are plugged into certain things like this front light strip, which isn't lit up right now, you might notice. So I will either need to wait for an official update that supports the hardware, or I'll need to use a combination of the Corsair IQ software and the Asus Aura Creator software, which is their new uh, bit of software, which is pretty complicated. I've only just started messing with it, and I will definitely be diving into that a little bit more in my follow-up video on this build, because as I usually do with my build videos, one video focuses on the physical assembly process of the build itself, and the second video is about testing the system, using it in different ways, whether it's the performance, or whether it's RGB setup, or anything you guys wanna see. So feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you'd like to see me do with this system in terms of use, or RGB configurations, or just testing in general to see how my airflow setup goes, since I do have mostly intake fans and just one exhaust there at the back. And that's another nice feature of these fans is they look good from the front or the back, but here is the final piece of the side panels, putting those back on, and just a, a few quick looks at some of the uh, quick RGB setups I was able to do with this. What we're looking at right now is a default Corsair watercolor. Of course, static colors look really good with this case, whether you're talking about all white or a fixed color like red or pink or purple or something like that. And I'm always a big fan of the truncated gradient, so to speak, rather than the RGB vomit that is so common. You take sort of a slice of the RGB spectrum and have it cycle between those colors, and I think that looks really nice as well. But again, guys, leave me your feedback on this build in the comment section down below. I'll post links to all these products down there too. Thank you so much to Leanne Lee, Asus, Corsair, and Kyle, of course, for helping me out with uh, the parts for this build. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can buy shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and all other manner of high quality merchandise. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.